At 7.51 on the morning of Saturday, December 21, 1968, there began from Cape Kennedy, Florida, the greatest voyage in the history of man. Three Americans, Frank Borman, James A. Lovell, Jr., and William A. Anders, guided their Apollo 8 spacecraft across nearly a quarter million miles of black void, out of the gravitational grasp of Earth, into orbit around the moon, and back once more to a chosen pinpoint on their home planet. Never before had man traveled so far, so fast, or looked so closely upon another celestial body. Never before had so many millions listened and watched their imaginations fired as the explorers spoke and were pictured across the vast emptiness of space. Never indeed had adventure ever borne all mankind so daringly near the boundaries of its aspirations. As Colonel Borman later described it, a most fantastic voyage. We have seen the technology of space exploration advance from less than 14 miles to 238,000 miles. It challenges the imagination to consider what the next 35 may bring. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President of the United States. First, I want to let you know how happy I am to be here tonight and how proud I am to be associated with the space program of the United States. The National Geographic Society's Hubbard Medal, conferred by the Society's Board of Trustees in commemoration of Gardner Green Hubbard, a founder of the Society and its first president, has become one of our nation's highest honors for research, exploration, and discovery. I'm honored to present the Hubbard Medal to astronauts Frank Borman, James A. Lovell, Jr., and William A. Anders. Along with this medal goes the special gratitude accorded only to those who dare to reach the unreachable stars. Gentlemen, if you will. Vice President, Dr. Payne, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, I, it would be entirely inappropriate for Jim and Bill and I to receive this wonderful award without honestly and humbly acknowledging the fact that we are merely representatives of the 400,000 people that did the, the real work on this job. I accept it with great honor, as I know Jim and Bill do. It has particular significance for us because of the organization that gives it. The National Geographic Society, of course, has done so much to foster exploration in the world and in this country. And more importantly, it has brought the wonders of the, not only the universe, but the wonders of our world into the living rooms of, of all of our homes. And I think it's a, a most remarkable organization. And perhaps we can most adequately uh, express our thanks by saying thank you. <laughs> 